Good morning. Good morning, and it's great to have you here this morning on um, a foggy, rainy sort of Mother's Day. So to all of our moms, to all of our sisters, aunts, teachers, friends, women in general who all help us grow in lots of different ways, happy Mother's Day to all of you. And good morning to all of you worshiping online. So could you all help me give a warm welcome to the people who are joining us from very far away on Facebook land. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being with us. If you are watching online, we will be taking communion together today, and we want you to be a part of that as well. So gather whatever elements you have available to you, even if, if that is bread and juice, great. If it's crackers and water or even coffee and donuts, whatever you have is perfectly acceptable. Another thing that I just want to point out to you is that in the pews in front of you are prayer cards. So if you have things that you want to share with each other, joys, people that need to be prayed for, please write those on the prayer cards so that we can add them uh, to our prayer list. To begin worship, I'm going to invite you to make some space in your mind and in your heart for God's presence. So let's take a deep breath together. And notice God's presence in this place with us. We take a moment in the morning to slow down and to intentionally sit in God's presence and to realize that the Spirit is here in this place with us. The Spirit's presence has been promised to us in today's scripture reading. So we adopt a position of prayer right now in whatever way feels comfortable to you. I invite you to keep breathing deeply in and out. We ask God to shed light and to guide our thoughts during this time. In the scripture readings that you have heard in the last few weeks, they are Jesus' instructions to his friends before his death. And he has spoken strong words, gentle words. Listen to some of them. Peace I leave with you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. I am the true vine. I have called you friends. Love one another as I have loved you. Reflect on where God has asked you to show love this week. And in showing love, where did that bring you joy? Where were the times this week that it was difficult to show love? Reflect on the times that you will need to show love today or maybe in the days to come and ask for God's grace that we might love each other as he has loved us.
We thank God for God's compassionate, listening heart and ears. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please join me in this prayer. Shine your face upon us, O God. Help us see your face in one another and hear your voice in the words that are spoken. Through your grace, make us holy that we may offer spiritual sacrifices that honor and glorify your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to invite the kids to come up this morning. another row if you want down there. Good morning. Hi. Do you want to come sit by my flowers? Come here. You want to sit here? You don't have to sit. We're not going to make you. It's so good to see all you guys this morning. Good morning to you. Um, is today... A special day? Yes. Mother's it day. is. What is it? Mother's Mother. Day. Mother's Day. Oh, my gosh. You guys all know you're so good. What do we do on Mother's Day? We celebrate moms. We celebrate our moms. That sounds like fun. You do? What do you do? I mean, like, decorate stuff for Mother's Day. Yes. Did you decorate for Mother's Day? You did? What did you put up? Want to sit here? Like, eh. Did you put up decorations, Jackson? You did? That sounds really cool. Did you make your guys, did you make mom a card or 
something like that fun? We need to let Santa know it was Charlie's idea. So we like got a like Lego set. Yeah. And, like, Does she know this? No. Oh. <laughs> like, has she got it yet? Okay. So we got a Lego set for her, and we put it together. Yeah. And it was like kind of like flowers and like a vase. Oh, that's awesome! Very cool. Why do you celebrate your moms? Because they help us. Because they help us. Ooh, what? For all the hard work they do. For all the hard work they do. Yeah, any other reasons? Like you love them. What was that? You love them? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You guys are a hard crowd today. Do all moms look the same? No. No, no all moms look different, right? They all come in different shapes and sizes and ages, and they all do lots of different things. They all have lots of different jobs. They all do amazing things. So that's why we celebrate all kinds of people and women who help us and care for us and love us today, right? Okay. So today isn't, um, isn't just for our moms or your mom or your mom or your mom. It's for all the awesome women who love and care for us. So what we're going to do today is we're going to give them a carnation. Do you know why we're going to give a carnation? Because it is Mother's Day. It's <laughs> well, when Mother's Day was started by a lady named Anna Jarvis, she started Mother's Day because her mom um, passed away, and at her funeral she gave everyone a flower, a white carnation, because she wanted to, everyone to remember how great and how much she loved her mom. And they, she wanted them to take this home and remember. She wanted Mother's Day to be something that was really simple and that we just showed our moms how much we loved them without a lot of fancy, crazy stuff. So she used carnations, which I think is pretty cool. So will you guys help me give all of the women in the congregation a flower? Okay, I'm going to give each of you a flower. You go find someone to give it to, all right? They don't have to be a mom. Yup, you can. Here you go, sir. Yes, please. There you go, Jackson. There you go. Don't forget the choir. There you go. Come back if you need more. Make sure your mama gets one. Do you want to give one to your mom? He's like, don't talk to me. Do you need more? Did you give one to your mom? Yeah. Do you need more? There you go. Do you got any more people? No? Do you need more? Do you need more? <coughs> Got anybody else, Jackson? Did we get them all? Did them over there. Did you get her over there? Okay. Help us out. Raise your hand if you're a woman without a flower right now. <laughs> Extra? Okay, we'll just leave them in here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Did we get them? Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Moms are pretty cool. I hope you celebrate um, your moms, your grandmas, your aunts, all the ladies in your lives that help you today uh, later, right? with Legos or whatever you got. It sounds awesome. Shall we pray? You repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God we thank you for Jesus, you for Jesus and, his and his example of love. Help us, Help us to be more like him. More like him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can grab some fruit shoes, okay?
Let us pray together. Gracious God, we pray that you would open our hearts, our minds, our ears, and our whole selves so that we might be receptive to your word and your message, that it might fall upon our hearts without resistance, that we might know that it is for us, and that you might mold us and make us to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, in the ways that we speak and act, and definitely in the ways that we love. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. If I told you that there is an epidemic in the United States that is rising rapidly than ever before, that 60 plus percent of all adults have experienced that has higher rates right now than diabetes, that increases the risk of dementia by over 50%, that rapidly increases the rates of heart disease, stroke, and even how long we live, weakens our immunity, rapidly increases de depression and anxiety, is equivalent health-wise the effects on our health to smoking 15 cigarettes a day and affects all ages of adults? What would you guess that we are speaking about? Very good, Lori. <laughs> I didn't expect you to get that. Lori said loneliness in case you didn't hear, and she is correct. Loneliness in America affects more than 60% of people. Statistics show right now that more than 60% of people report feelings of loneliness. And when we are talking about loneliness today, we are not defining that as pure social isolation or being alone or even choosing to be alone although those can add to the effects of loneliness. We are talking about being alone, feeling alone, and not liking it. That is how we define loneliness today. We also know that people do not have to physically be by themselves to feel lonely. In 2019, a study was done, and I'm sure this number is much higher now, that reported that 58% of Americans said nobody in their life knew them well. Loneliness is proven clinically to have adverse effects on our health. You heard the statistics. Dementia rises over 50%. It is much higher for heart disease and stroke. It weakens our immunity. It even affects how long we live. And the one that was most Mind-blowing to me was that it has the same effects on our health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. People right now express more than ever that they are looking for friendships and someone to feel connected to. And it is normal that we may think of older American adults when we think of loneliness, when they have retired or they have lost spouse or their family isn't near them. And while they are absolutely included, Age is no longer a precursor for determining loneliness because some of the highest rates, over 60%, come from college-age students who are surrounded by people all day. After deep diving into this subject this week, I wondered how did it get this bad? You may think the pandemic, right? When we were isolated from each other, and yes, that absolutely caused some harm to feelings of loneliness. But studies have shown that loneliness has been on the rise since the 70s. They also show that currently, 
we have more things affecting how we feel lonely than ever before. We are at work more. We are with friends less. We have less free time, and there are more demands on our time, different demands on our time. We can play lots of video games in isolation. We can do Netflix in isolation. There are many things that demand our time. And I know that whenever we talk adversely about social media and technology, technology we get called boomers, so here we go. <laughs> but social media and advanced technology has aided tremendously to the effects of loneliness. Ironically, those things were created to increase our connection, but we often do them in isolation. Americans report fewer friendships and less reliance on people, close friends, for emotional support than ever before. And a Yale scientist I listened to this week called loneliness an epidemic. So it is pretty clear that our health is connected to being connected. Is this the church's problem? Is this the church's problem? I want to see what the scripture has to say. So today, we are taking a look at what Jesus has to say in the middle of what we call his farewell disclosure to his disciples. He has brought them to the upper room. They have washed, he has washed their feet. They have broken bread. And he has told them he would be betrayed and denied. And he is also alluding that he will be leaving. In John 14, 15, he says, If you love me, you will keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. The world cannot receive it. It neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. He abides in you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, and you also will live. On the day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commands and keep them are those who love me, and those who loved me will be loved by the Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. After reading and pondering and studying the scripture, there are so many good messages for us in this. But I want to draw your attention to something significant that Jesus says in verse 18. I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you as orphans. It's extremely easy for us to get emotionally detached from this scripture. To read it and to think, well, that's lovely. And I'm sure the disciples thought it was a lovely speech as well. But I want you to think about what is going on when Jesus says this. Jesus has gathered the people who love him the most. And it has seemed like a normal celebration of Passover to start. They're just going to get together to eat the Passover meal together. His people, his men who have devoted their whole lives, the last three years to him, who have sacrificed their time and their jobs and their families to be with him and travel with him and study him, and they love him. And it doesn't take long for them to notice that this is not a normal Passover meal. He washes their feet. He breaks bread with them. He says odd things about it being his body and his blood he calls Judas a betrayer, and Judas leaves in a dark cloud. Everybody is confused. He tells everyone that the leader of the men is going to deny him. The people in the room are afraid. They are confused. They are probably teary-eyed and trembling. And to add to all of that, Jesus keeps alluding to his death. And as he's speaking and telling, him these telling them these things, 
He can see their fear rising, their anxiety coming over. And he gives them these words of comfort. I will not leave you as orphans. You will never be alone. In a world full of loneliness, is this the church's problem? I think the answer is 1,000% yes. Why? What did Jesus command his followers to do? Love him and love people, right? And he says, if we love him, this is what we do. In John's gospel that we just read from, the only command that Jesus gives is to love God and to love other people because this is how they will know who you are by your love. The cure to loneliness might be love. Loving God's people, showing them love. You in this room are the hands and feet of Christ. You are the ones that get to carry the love back out into the world. And I think that we often forget that we are empowered by the best force that there is of the Spirit. You have the antidote to a lot of people's problem outside this door. You have the gift of the Spirit. And Jesus says, I know you love me by the way that you love each other. The kind of love that Jesus talked about was not some big philosophical love that kind of sits over there and looks nice and we hope to obtain, but we keep it at a comfortable distance because it's rather dangerous. Jesus' love was always in action in feeding people, in touching people that couldn't be touched, in healing people, in washing feet, breaking bread. It was action. With the body of Christ in existence, the rates of loneliness should go down, not up. We are busy people. But there are people who need more of our time and things that need less. There are people in this room and in this community who need us to realize what we have been empowered with. Love. And to put that in action, not only here, but outside these walls. There is a lot of power in small actions in your smiles, in your conversation, in your half an hour over coffee, in your passing each other, in phone calls. If you need proof of that, I would invite you to come with me to the care center someday. One thing that you may be thinking is, I'm the lonely person. I'm the statistic. And while I completely understand that, I want you to know that the amazing thing about love is that the more that you give, the more you get back. Loneliness may be an epidemic, but the church is holding the cure. You are holding the cure. And the cure is putting your love in action. So we get to decide if you hold it or if you'll be giving it away, it is your choice to make. Let us pray together. Holy and loving God, in our busy and our full lives, we have sometimes turned our back on your commitment, on your commandment to love each other. It is often easier to seek our comfort and our ease, and to turn away from the pain of others. Forgive our failure to find ourselves in you. Nurture the hope 
and the love that is within us that you instill in us that we find our commandment from that we might live as your children and we might abide in your spirit we are never orphans we praise God for that your presence is always with us your love is always healing and for this we are grateful We thank you for the many, many blessings in our lives. If you have blessings and joys that you would like to name out loud this morning, I invite you to do that now. We love our babies in church. We love all the moms and the women in the church and outside. Can you say that again? For rain. For rain, yes. And spring flowers. We also know, God, that there are things that are heavy on our hearts this morning, and so if you have people that you would like to pray for in the same manner, I invite you to name those. Steve Little Little. and Barb. We pray for Olivia and the students traveling and also, yes, the Hazen's family. Graduates, yes. We pray our Diana in our prayers. We lift all of these people up to you, God, those who have been spoken out loud and those who we are still holding in our hearts. And while we celebrate all of the amazing moms today, we also lift up moms who are not here, moms who are in glory, moms who are yet to be, those who are never biological moms but who still teach and love and continue to nurture those around them. We praise God for all of the people loving who have been put in our lives. We thank you for Jesus and for this example of perfect love. And we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, I would invite you to spend a few moments praising God through your tithes and offerings this morning.
please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Through these gifts, proclaim your word of grace. Shine forth through our offerings and our lives that others may see your face and know your steadfast love. In your love and grace we pray. Amen. be seated. Today we have the privilege of gathering here at the Lord's table. We come to this table with a love for Christ and with repentant hearts. It was on the night that Jesus gathered his disciples for a meal that he chose to drive home his point of love and the truth of the relational power that it recreates. He took a basin and a towel and he washed the feet of the people who called him Lord and demonstrated the love that God's love transcends rank and placement and social status. Jesus showed us that love unveils to us the truth that God commands us to be neighbors and to recognize in each other someone who God loves and who also calls us to love. It was on that night, after washing feet of those who would betray him and deny him and sell him, that he took bread. He blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my body that has been broken for you, and every time you do this, remember. And so today, God, we remember. After supper was over, in the like manner, he took the cup and blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins, for you and for the whole world. And every time you drink this, remember. And so today, God, we remember. I invite you to open your hands and receive this blessing. Gracious God, How grateful we are to have a seat at this table, to be hosted by you, to have grace so lavishly poured upon us. We are grateful for your love and mercy, your kindness, compassion, generosity, and justice. We thank you for Christ, who shows us the perfect example of how to love and care for each other, even with those we dislike we disagree with, and with those who we would rather pass by. Heal us, God. Make us one with each other. Grant us hearts that desire to serve one another. 
Make us instruments of your grace in this world. Pour out your spirit among these people and on these gifts of bread and juice and whatever else we have gathered. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood, making us one with each other, one with you, and one in ministry to the whole world until that day when Jesus returns and we all have a seat at his victory table. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This table is set by God, so no matter who you are, what you think you are, where you've been, what other denomination you may belong to, you are welcome at this table. This table is set and ready for you to receive. As Methodists, we believe that Christ is with us in communion. And so if you so feel moved, the prayer railings are here for you also to take time to pray.
Let us pray together. God, we thank you for this holy mystery in which you have revealed yourself to us. And we ask that you might fill us with your spirit and your power, that we have received this nourishment and we might go back out into the world to share your love and your grace with all of those in need. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to skip that song. Sorry. Okay. And any announcements that we have to share with each other today? That's right. Uh, we are hosting the baccalaureate for WCV here on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. If you want to just come and see how great that is, please do. We would invite you all to come. Um, any other announcements? So in lieu of that last hymn, I bet she forgot. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Craig, what is your announcement? My granddaughter is going to a trip to Washington, D.C. next year, and she's going to Tangmar. There's only $1 each. She'll be out here until Tangmar. She has to attend Tangmar this year. Okay. Let's empty the box after worship, all right? Yes. Okay, great. One more week of Sunday school, then a little break, and VBS. Adult Sunday school is happening, so come any week on Sunday morning at 9 to join us. Any other announcements? Okay, for our last hymn, um, it's Nancy Norris's birthday today. Today. <laughs> so let's sing happy birthday, can we? birthday, Nancy. Thank you for being here with us. <laughs> Friends, let's stand to receive this blessing before you go. As you leave here today, maybe you remember that you are never alone, that God's love abides in you, and because you have been given this gift, may you go share it with the rest of the world. Amen? Amen. Amen.